Hey, welcome back. Uh, I have to apologize for the lack of updates on this uh, Hero Clicks table project. Uh, I've been really busy, and if you watch my channel aside from these videos, then you've seen some of the other stuff that I've been doing. Uh, but in addition, the store itself has been quite busy this summer. And so it has kind of eaten into my ability to uh, do um, projects like this uh, within the store, at least while also doing uh, video. The video uh, adds time to the projects uh, that I don't necessarily otherwise have. So rather than uh, having uh, kind of a step-by-step -step for the things that I've been doing recently, and as you can see, there have been a lot of changes uh, since the last video. Uh, I'm just going to give you an update and then tell you where I'm going. And hopefully with the next update uh, or with the next video, I will be able to provide you with uh, a little bit more step-by-step -step instruction. Um, keep your fingers crossed. I can't guarantee anything. So uh, since the last time you saw the table or the map, uh, I've gotten some paint on it, as you can see. Um, there's actually, I want to say, four or five colors on this. Uh, it started with a dark brown at the base. Uh, and it, my original intent was uh, the sides were going to be the dark brown uh, and, and then fade to, to a lighter tan uh, through dry brushing. Um, and then I was going to do the snow on top. But what ended up happening is uh, I realized uh, that it actually looked really good with uh, kind of a snowy, snowy side. It makes it look icy as opposed to just uh, uh, dirt. So I went with the dark brown and so yeah, so let's go back to the colors. Dark brown base. So the whole thing got a dark brown base then uh, a light blue, really sort of a baby blue, um, was the first in the snow step and I did dry brush that onto the sides uh, of the mountain as well. And uh, for those who don't know, dry brushing is a technique where you take your paintbrush, uh, you dip it in paint, you wipe away most of the, the paint until your brush is almost dry, thus the name dry brushing, uh, and then you lightly uh, brush over the details so that it tends to collect uh, on the upper points and not into the recesses. And you can kind of control how much you do uh, to give yourself various, uh, various looks. So anyway, so the light blue, baby blue, um, first for my snow. I didn't go straight to white. Never go straight to white. Uh, because once you go to white, where do you go from there? Uh, and the blue actually really helps make the, the snow area look uh, icy and cold. So blue, uh, then a really light blue, and then white. And those were my, kind of my three steps with the uh, uh, dark blue, complete coverage uh, over the top areas, uh, lighter dry brush uh, over the sides, then light blue dry brush over the top uh, and over the sides, and then white light dry brush over top and sides. Um, and by the way, on the white, I was really just concentrating, as far as the sides go, primarily on the edge, the corner edge, and, and really just trying to hit the top part parts. You can see that there is um, there is paint down in the recesses, but the farther down into the recesses you go, the darker that paint is. Um, at some point I'll go into more detail about dry brushing, uh, but for now that's where I am. Uh, something else that had been holding me up for a while was the trees, and I mentioned in one of my previous videos that my plan was to order some uh, Chinese made trees that I had seen on eBay. And I'd gotten a, at least one comment on YouTube where somebody said, mm, be careful, uh, you can get crap. And I didn't want to get crap. 
So I did some more searching around, uh, read a lot of articles, thought again about making trees myself, but then I ran into uh, these trees. Uh, these are from JTT. Uh, I purchased them through Amazon. Uh, they're actually sold by Amazon. So it's JTT. These are the Super Scenic Spruce 4 inch to 6 inch 24 pack. Now the funny thing about these trees, when I got them in the uh, in the mail, they shipped in a package that was this big, right? So about that tall, about that wide, and I was like, that's not going to be enough trees. Uh, but then when you separate them out, they're this big. So, uh, I, I felt a lot better. I may need to end up buying uh, one more package of these. It's about 25 bucks. They're like a, you know, a buck a tree, um, which is cool. That's fine. Uh, perfect. I mean, considering what you're getting, um, that seems like a perfectly fair price to me. These are really nice. So, uh, first thing I need to do is figure out how to place them. Um, I want to make the trees removable to make the table playable. It's not just a display table, it's got to be a useful table. So the idea here is that um, the solution that I came up with was to have holes that the, the trees can set in, kind of like on this, except in this case they're just sort of pushed into the foam. Um, but the problem with this approach that I, you know, that I have here is very temporary because uh, this foam is going to wear out over time, and the trees are just going to, you know, eventually want to just fall out. My solution was to get some tubing, and uh, so I'm going to drill holes and cut some tube and drop the tube into the hole, and the tube will act as a uh, kind of a sleeve to hold the trees uh, and protect the foam at the same time. So that actually fits a lot better than I thought it was going to. Um, I still may end up uh, wrapping a little taper on the bottom of the tree so it fits snugly so that maybe it will uh, hold on its own. But that's not bad actually. This is the first time I've, I've done a test. The, the trees themselves though have uh, a variety of sizes of trunks. So like this one, that one's floating in there. But uh, all I knew when I went into this is uh, that I wanted to do something like this. I just didn't know what I was going to use. So I went to the hardware store and the first thing I found were these uh, aluminum spacers. And uh, they were perfect, you know, like kind of pre-cut about that big, about the same, you know, diameter as this. And I was like, oh, that'll work. That'll be just fine. They don't need to be aluminum, but, you know, whatever. But they were a dollar a piece. So that would have been, uh, well, just to hold these trees, that would have been $24 for these little spacers. So talk to the hardware guy. I said, hardware guy, I, here's what I need to do. I need something to act as a sleeve, and it could be these uh, aluminum spacers, but... I, I'm, I'm cheap and I don't want to spend a dollar a piece on them, so what do I do? And uh, he's, at first he said, well, you can look at these other things. Oh, I've got these other um, nylon spacers over here you could use, and they're about half that price. So it's like, oh, that's, a, that's, that's, a, that's in the right direction. So I'm looking around some more, and then he came back and he's like, oh, you know what? Over in aisle 15, we've got, uh, we've got plastic tube, and you could just cut that down. And I'm like, perfect. So I went over three dollars more than I will ever need. Um, I'll have to find other uses for this stuff because I'll probably need you know this much of it. But three dollars as opposed to twenty four dollars I think that's a steal. So uh, what's my next step? Well I actually think my next step is going to be um, uh, lining out all of the areas where the trees are going to go. That's uh, green lines in the grid lines. Now I did, uh, I hand lined the starting areas on either side of the map with a brush. And that was no fun. Uh, 
I'm, I'm not good at straight lines and straight lines that are 24 inches long it was a chore it, it's functional it's fine uh, here actually let me show you Let's see if you can see it oh I don't have my here oh yeah there you go it's adjusting so yeah, so that was by hand. I guess it doesn't look bad uh, on the video there, but um, yeah, I wasn't thrilled with that. I actually have a pinstriping tool, which is essentially a uh, glass bottle uh, over the top of a uh, sort of dispenser with a geared wheel underneath it. And what happens is uh, you put paint in the bottle and it seeps down onto the geared wheel and then you just can roll the wheel and paint a line. It's a pinstriping tool for pinstriping. Uh, we've used it at the store here for uh, terrain projects in the past. Uh, used it to great effect to do a uh, street scene table before, so to do all the, all the lines in the road. So it's perfect for that. Um, and I'll try it out on this. The, the only difficulty is going to be uh, when you know you have to get into uh, into corners and stuff, but it'll probably be fine. So I think uh, I'm, I may try and concentrate on that today. I'll see what I can do, and uh, maybe you know once I do that, I can drill the holes for the tubing and maybe drop the tubing in. You know, uh, I actually didn't bring my toolbox with me, I just realized, but I do have a drill here anyway. Uh, so all I need is the drill and a little glue just to tack it in place. And uh, I think we'll be good to go. Um, after that, my plan is for the, the, um, the hindering terrain areas with the trees, uh, I'm going to cover with a, uh, uh, a kind of flocking to make it look as if the uh, uh, pine needles have collected underneath the uh, underneath the trees, and so there's actually less snow also because of the trees, and it'll just you know provide a little bit more visual interest and a little bit more of kind of tying the trees into the ground, and the trees themselves I will probably dust some uh, white paint over the top of to give them that. Uh, snowed on look so that's where I am and uh, whoo thank you for uh, continuing to wait on the next update on this and hopefully we'll have uh, have more for you soon all right so thank you very much and uh, we'll see you next time